Hello everyone and welcome to the next video in the series. This is a problem solving skills video uh, on the topic of superposition. And in this video we will focus on the quantity whose value is represented by a term. Now um, I have uh, become aware of a few problems with the videos but uh, including the lighting over here it has well uh, the lighting is not very good quality. But one, one thing I know is that things improve over time. And uh, recently I actually bought a um, ring light. And I'm hoping that uh, in a couple of days when I receive it, the quality of the, of the video will become much better than what it is now. As I also mentioned in the previous video, I've started to introduce the videos, uh, the videos shorter videos, uh, so that they are m more manageable on my side and, uh, and also more, I guess, user friendly on your side. You don't have to spend a lot of time uh, trying to locate a subtopic uh, within a longer video. So there is, uh, there will be subtopics now. The topic, main topic here is superposition, and the subtopic we will focus on in this video is the quantity whose value is represented by a term. All right. Uh, so on that note, uh, let's start the video. And uh, I guess everyone knows that in an algebraic equation, every quantity symbol such as let's say m for mass, n for amount, and so on, uh, they represent the value of a quantity. And also every numerical value uh, represents the value of, uh, of a quantity. Let me correct that spelling mistake right there. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, however, it is also true that in addition to quantity symbols and numerical values, terms represent the values of quantities as well. And uh, let me explain what I mean with uh, by this uh, through examples. Let's take a look at this word problem. Problem one says you bought two pens at one fifty per pen and three notebooks at four ninety nine per notebook. What amount of money did you spend in total? Now the word problem uh, can be modeled by setting a as the amount of money I spent in dollars, and then a will be equal to we multiply one point five by two. To find the amount of money that we spent on the pens and then to this we add the product of 4.99 and 3 which represents the amount of money that we spent on the notebooks okay so let's take a look at these terms now uh, the first one is a on the left side let me actually put some uh, boxes around these terms so a is one term and then 1.5 times 2 is another term and of course we know that because the addition breaks up the expression into two terms and then the next term is 499 times 3. And, uh, and the idea is that uh, each one of these terms represent the value of a certain quantity. Let's take a look at them. The term on the left, A, represents the, the amount of money I spent in dollars. So you can see the quantity name here, amount. And uh, if we take a look at the next term, which is 1.50 times 2, uh, this one represents the amount of money that is spent on the pens. So when you multiply 1.5 by 2, you find that you spent $3. And the $3 is the amount of money that you spent on the pens. So the whole term represents this value. And then the next term is 499 times 3, which represents the amount of money that is spent on the notebooks. Okay, so uh, one, one reason it's good to know this is because you can and you, you should also train yourself uh, to do this uh, to break an expression along the lines of additions and subtractions as soon as you see an equation this is the first thing that you should train yourself to see where are the additions and subtractions outside brackets are we adding and subtracting stuff now what those stuff are exactly is what we look at next but first we have to find these pieces and uh, if you can associate meaning to each of these terms in the sense of uh, the value of what quantity they are they are measuring then you can actually read this along the lines of superposition as the amount of money i spent is equal to the amount of money spent on the pens plus the amount of money spent on the notebooks and that uh, this is something you should do before you get into more detail uh, as to what are these actual individual numbers uh, you should break the expression down along the lines of superposition and then, uh, and then read it uh, to see what are the main quantities that are being related in this equation. Now, the quantity, it's also important to know that the quantity uh, whose value is represented by a term 
and by that we mean the whole term, uh, is different from the quantities whose values are represented by the quantity symbols and numerical values inside that term. So the value uh, the, that the whole term represents is different from the value that 1.5 represents on its own and the value that 2 on its own represents. In some cases, the value that the term represents may be identical to the value of the quantity symbol or the numerical value that's within that term. Uh, like in this case, A is pretty much what the term is all about. So the value that A represents is the same as the value that the whole term represents. Now to, to explain a bit more, let's take a look at what, what 1.5 is on its own. We will take a look at what 2 is on its own, and then we take a look at what the product represents. So 150, of course, is the cost of a pen. The unit is dollar, dollars per pen. And then 2 is the number of pens, and the unit is the unit of counting, which is 1. And then we have 1.50 times 2, which is the amount of money spent on the pens in dollars. So you see uh, the, the value of the quantity that, that uh, 1.52 times 1.5 times 2 represents is different from what 1.5 represents on its own and it's different from what 2 represents on its own. Okay, let's take a look at uh, another problem. Problem 2 for breakfast, Roberto had two cups of coffee at 145 calories per cup, a slice of toast with jam containing 180 calories and two eggs at 210 calories per egg. What is Roberto's net intake of energy from breakfast? Now the model for this problem, we use uh, capital letter E to represent Roberto's net intake of energy from breakfast in calories. And E becomes equal to, we put down 145 times 2, which computes the amount of energy, the intake of energy from the, from the coffee. And then to this, uh, we add the uh, 180, which represents the intake of energy from the toast and jam. And then to this, we add 210 times 2, which represents the intake of energy from the eggs. Uh, and, uh, and now, if we take a look at the terms in this equation, and this time let me put boxes around them. So there is E on the left side, and then there is 145 times 2. Then there is 180, which is uh, just on its own. And then we have 210 times 2. And these are the terms in this equation. Now let's as associate meaning to these terms. On the left side, E represents Roberto's net intake of energy from breakfast, which is pretty much what this line is. And then the next term, which is the first term on the right side, 145 times 2, represents energy intake from the coffee in calories. You notice the use of the quantity name all over the place here. For each one of these terms, uh, we can explain what uh, the value of what quantity it represents by naming that quantity. So you see energy. That's a quantity name. Again, energy, a quantity name. And then we have uh, 180, which represents the energy intake from the toast and jam. And following this, we have 210 times 2, which represents energy intake from the eggs in calories. And now, if, uh, if we have that understanding, then we can now read the statement here as Roberto's net intake of energy from breakfast is equal to energy intake from the coffee plus energy intake from the toast and jam plus energy intake from the eggs. All right, time to move on to the next problem, which should have said problem three. All right, uh, calculate the mass of one mole of CaOH2. The mass of one mole of CA is 40.08 grams. The molar masses of O and H are 16 grams per mole and 1.008 grams per mole, respectively. And for problem number three, we are seeking uh, the value of mass, and therefore we use uh, lowercase m to represent the value of the mass of one mole of CaOH2. This will be measured in grams. Now, m is equal to the mass of one CA, or I should say one mole of CA, 40.08 grams. And uh, to this, we add the mass of two moles of O each. And now we have this problem. Now, for this problem, on the left side, there is one term, and that's pretty much M. On the right side, we have, uh, now we have the addition outside brackets. This one will break it into two terms, 40.08, and then whatever follows that. So the next uh, term is 40.08. 
and then following that we have two times well pretty much everything that's uh, that's left on the on the right side which is here and these are the three terms in this uh, equation let's make sense of them on the left side m is the mass of one mole of caoh2 in grams 40.08 is the mass of one mole of ca in grams and two times 16 plus 1.008 is the mass of two moles of uh, that should be OH. Let's quickly correct this. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So this is the mass of two moles of OH. And uh, and then again, if I can, if I if I understand that, then I can read the read what what's being uh, what I'm looking at here as the mass of one mole of CaOH two is equal to the mass of one mole of Ca plus the mass of two moles of OH. Okay, we now move on to the next problem, which is now problem number four. This morning, Martin had 3.8 liters of a solution. He used the solution at a rate of 0 0.57 liters per hour for 2.5 hours. At noon, he received a delivery of 5.5 liters of the solution. Later, he used 1.8 liters of the solution. What volume of the solution does he have left? And uh, for this problem, uh, we will use the symbol V, capital V, uh, to represent the value of solution that Martin has left in liters. <clears throat> now, V is equal to, we start with what he started with, which was 3.8 liters, and then subtract 0 0.57 times 2.5, which is the volume of uh, solution that he used. And then there was a delivery of 5.5 liters, and then he used 1.8 liters. So this becomes the equation for this problem. Now, uh, this time I'm not going to draw boxes around the terms, and uh, we, we just identify them as V is 1. Then on the right side we have 3.8, that's one term. 0 0.57 times 2.5, that's another term. 5.5, that's a term and 1.8, which is the last term that we have. Let's uh, let's see what they represent. V is the volume of the solution that Martin has left. 3.8 is volume of the solution this morning. 0 0.57 times 2.5 represents the volume of the solution used this morning. 5.5, volume of the solution delivered at noon, and 1.8 is the volume of the solution used this afternoon. And again, we can read the statement now as the volume of the solution that Martin has left is equal to volume of the solution this morning minus volume of the solution used this morning plus volume of the solution delivered at noon minus volume of the solution used this afternoon. All right. So that brings us to the end of the topic. Uh, the quantity whose value is represented by a term. And uh, in the next few videos, I will be talking about other aspects of superposition. Uh, and I believe the next one coming up is consistency. Until then, I will see you later on. And uh, I'll be gone in, yeah.